Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. We are continuing to do this series of webinars, and who knows how long we'll do this. Um, just remember, I'll be taking a break in September. I am heading off to Kenya. I have two horseback safaris going on this year, so I will not be here from the 15th to October 11th. Um, and then we'll just pick it up again in the fall. And of course, I've got a whole bunch of expos coming up. So hopefully I will see you live at one of those events. Tonight, my guest is Ida Hammer, one of my favorite people. And she is here to show us something super cool. I happen to have mine right here. <laughs> like we've been talking about this. You and I have been talking about this for a long time. A long time, along with a few other things that we talked about for a long time. <laughs> Yes. Okay. We'll get there eventually. We still, they keep sending us the wrong part to fix our clicker press. So they sent yet another wrong part overnight. That's over special. That took two That's weeks. <laughs> and, and the wrong part was probably on back order. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna let everything Ida introduce is herself while I go take care of the cat issue because otherwise she will just keep screaming. So I'll be right back, Ida. You tell them who you are, okay? Okay. okay. I'm Ida. Hello. <laughs> A little more than so, that. Um, I'm Ida. <laughs> What? Oh, she's down at the cat. So I'm Ida. Um, I am Ida Hammer. I'm, I'm a trimmer a clinician, um, founder of the Mackinac Dells Whole Horse Whole Horse Hoof Care um, program. And so um, I'm with Wendy tonight because we've been working on for a long time. This is why Tina Thomas is going to be on the panelist. She's just trimming. But Tina and Jamie Thomas and um, myself came up with a, a way that we can we can expand the hoof classes uh, throughout the world with um, the double hoof, it's a trimmable hoof. So I'm super glad to be here to talk with Wendy. I'm like, we always have a good time when we get to talk anyways. So um, it's just fun to catch up and chat and have a night where I get home before midnight so I can do something not trimming this late, just talking. So as soon as she gets back, we can, back. We can get started. There she is. Cats out. See, as Brad went to feed the horses because I thought this was at seven. And so we we're going to feed afterward. <laughs> now it's going to be too late. So he went to feed. As soon as he left, the cat started screaming. <laughs> you know that's one thing about the webinar it's, it's just, just like that at our house <laughs> it's, it's like that at our house but it's dogs it's like they know they know what time it is without having to be told yeah they're like hey, time so i told them what we're doing but um so i waited for you for the rest of it okay so okay you're gonna screen share now what do you want to do now? okay i wasn't sure yeah okay i can do that so. if you already introduced yourself we're good i did Okay, we good? Yeah. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. So, so um, it's been quite a few years. I'm like, well, you and I had even discussed this back probably three years ago when we were visiting, Winnie and I. But um, so Tina is one of my graduates. Um, she's a superstar. And um, her and I have been talking and I, I love teaching my classes all over the country. And it's been like, I love it and I'll still keep doing it. But um, you can't reach enough people fast enough. So um, like people had approached me before about doing DVD and that kind of stuff. And um, which I don't mind doing that. But for me, I'm like if I, and I can be the most interesting DVD in the world, but if I'm trying to listen to something and just listen to it, I have to be doing something with it. Otherwise I'm getting kind of sleepy. So um, I thought, well, I'm not going to do a DVD unless I can help someone stay awake with something to do because <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can't help it. It's like, it's just, it's just me. It's like, I can be the most interesting subject in the world and I'll be watching it. And it's like, it's just, I don't know, it's the tone of the lights or whatever, but if I'm not doing something with it, I'm going to nod off. It's just me. Or maybe I'm just tired. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say chronically sleep deprived. <laughs> <laughs> it could be maybe a little... So uh, Tina and I were talking about it because I was like, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we could just come up with a trimmable foot that we could um, ship because it's like it's not practical to ship, you know, cadaver legs all over the place and it's not practical. Well, sometimes I'm like, there's a shortage of them, actually, but I'm like, it's not practical to ship them and especially out of country, you can't ship them. So Tina and I started talking about it. And so she pitched it to her husband, Jamie, and we started talking about this. And so we have been through lots of trials, lots and lots of trials with the different different ways to do it, different materials. And and, and finally, I'm like, Jamie really hit on, um, like I dead on on what he's got going on now. So between the three of us brainstorming and Jamie putting it into practice, it's like, it's been phenomenal. So Jamie came up with the name. It was like, we was thinking of a name together. And Jamie came up with the name, him and Tina actually, because I'm like from like 
like some of the TV shows like doppelgangers. So uh, they're like, what do you think about doppelhook? I'm like, I think that's freaking awesome, man. So, um, so I just put up there. So like doppel is a German noun to mean that something uh, similar or identical to another thing. So like, man, then the hoof is the horny part of the foot of an ungulate animal, especially a horse. So how perfect is that to name a name something doppelhook? And it's kind of a fun name anyway. So, and so Jamie, like these really are um, identical or very, very similar to, to the cadaver feet that we trim. And um, we carefully pick those out. Uh, Tina and I pick through the, the the legs that we want to to um, to 3D print, and then Jamie makes all the rest of the magic happen with what, how he does it. Okay. And um, when and you know like and the um, Jamie and Tina has actually incorporated their whole family into like the little production <laughs> line. So <laughs> so it's been awesome. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you think like, okay, you guys, it's like this could be really good, or you could just stay out of trouble, whichever. <laughs> but, <laughs> but so they, they came up with um with the, the way to make this happen. So um so the cool part about Doppelhoof, maybe go like maybe. Oh, uh you gotta make sure you're on the right screen on your computer. There you yeah. go. There okay. now go to your arrow. Still not doing arrow. There you go. Keep going. Okay, so this is a collaborative effort um, like between Tina and Jamie and myself. So I'm like, I just put our pictures up there because um, if you know the Thomases, I'm like, they will not take credit for anything. And I'm like, and they are like the reason why it, it all came together. So I wanna make sure that they get all this. Like I know Jamie's on here, but Tina's trimming, but you can still hear me, Tina. So um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, the website for the Doppelhoof is doppelhoof.com. But I wanted to make sure that we could um, we can like make sure that they they are mentioned here and, and could join us. So it's a new teaching available to the whole world. Um, so we was already pressed to do this, like to come up with this stuff, because um, again, I'm like I wanted something in people's hands while they're trying to learn, you know, what we're trying to teach them without just kind of like talking at them. I wanted to be talking with them with something in their hand. So that was already the point. But then when COVID happened and then, you know, it was crazy because then people couldn't get to classes. Um, some places like couldn't even get trimmers to be able to come to their, their place. I'm like, so left people, a lot of people, I feel like they got stranded or um, uh, left without options when, when they couldn't get their horses trimmed. So if, to me, every horse owner should have a set of these so that if anything ever happens that they, they can't get somebody there or an emergency happens or who knows. But um, so we really sped up the, our brainstorming when that happened, like we, I, we, like we have to get this going so that we could put send these anywhere in the world. We can, um, people can practice anywhere that they are. I'm like, it could be like, I, I had, I was doing a consultation with the lady um, in the, oh, Alberta, I think. But it was like at one point when she was, we were doing the consultation together, it was like 60 below. And so, so like nobody wants to like the, nobody wants to trim at 60 below. So it's like, well, you could take this double hoof and have it in your house and practice what you need to do. And I could draw on the foot and draw on her, her horse's feet and that kind of stuff. So that's where we started really, you know, pumping up the efforts. And, um, you like, know, like I you said, know, Ida, that's the thing that as much as uh, COVID has been a bad thing. It has also been a good thing because it has uh, ele escalated, elevated, pushed forward a lot of things that we wouldn't have been able to stop long enough to do. Yeah. You know? uh, and there's yeah. always some good when, when something bad happens. And so I think that that's one of the things that we can look at here is the creativeness and the ability to have the time to come out with stuff like this, to get it done, get it worked through. And, you know, I just want to say that I, I, having having made have being a manufacturer the amount of effort that i cannot imagine that has gone into this design um i did the unboxing video which i put up on facebook which was so much fun um because it's every detail has been paid attention to and i think that's what i want to impress on people is that every detail down to the string that ties it all together in the box um there's so much thought and love that has gone into this product to give people a tool to really be able to help their horses. And I, and I want to really emphasize that because I, that's how I see this. Thank you. I feel like, um, I, I feel like that too. It's like, um, so it's really cool and fun to me because, um, with the Thomas family, 
uh, Tina's the horse gal and Jamie's the, um, the uh, creative guy. And so Jamie doesn't really have that much to do with the horses, but he has like all the love to like that Tina has of the horses and to put some of the things like in my favorite, one of my favorite things that he put on, he came up with this and put it on the box. I just love it because when you open the lid, it says simply trimmable. And like, I just, I love that. And so I, like, it really, like, it really was a, a an effort of, of um, you blacked out there. It, it, you got too close and then it wouldn't go when you. Oh, it was too that. close. Yeah, it just like it had the box lid for a second in it. There you go. But it's like, I mean, right down to the the cool uh, stretchy paper. And, and I've used the crinkles when I shipped out some of my surefoot mugs. I used orange. This will be in your house forever. <laughs> <laughs> the orange makes it really obvious, but it's awesome. Like I said, it's there's so much thought that has gone into this to be able to provide people with the opportunity to say, to be able to look at a trim and figure out a trim without stressing their horse and without being stressed that they're stressing their horse. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, and yes. I think that that's just, just brilliant. Anyway, keep going. Well, that was like, that was a huge part for us because so, and I teach a lot of classes. I have like, I have, I have thousands of students and, 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 the more that you can take the stress off of someone, the easier that they can learn it. And like, and then they can get familiar with how to operate their tools and like, and they're not scared, you know, like scared that they're gonna hurt their horse. And they can start like practice, like like practice makes, makes, makes better, but perfect practice makes, you know, even better. So, um, you know, I think well, it's so- I, You know, I think it is, you're continually improving at your, at your craft and your art. Right, you never stop getting better, um, and to be able to have the time, like for me, to be able to have the time to work through what I'm going to do. My horses start getting really tired that I'm hanging onto their leg, okay? Yeah. And they're like, "Mom, are you going to do that again?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm really slow, and I'm really trying to figure this out." Even though you know, and yeah, so it's just yeah keep going <laughs> yeah so so that's what that's like that's all these are things that we brainstormed over and over about is like how can we do that all the way to the fact that um like the this so we've had like different prototypes that we've did and and every every feel touch consistency of every piece that's in the leg has been went through like trial after trial and and comparing it to like real horses and so like the the latest um doppel leg has like the the it's been um printed with the the hair on it but we had one before that that had no hair but it had you could see the veins and stuff so like that was we like we just we went through tons of trial and error and uh, you you know how many hotel rooms we've tr tr trimmed these in to see what consistency felt the best <laughs> so like, i just lots i've of unshared so just so that i can hold it up close and you can see that there's there's hair right yeah it's, the detail yeah. is terrific but i, I have questions so keep going because i want to get to okay okay so i'm gonna go to the next part and then you ask questions because Yep. So like, so you can use these, you can use these with, um, for, I have online classes now with, um, Thinkific with the American Odell's two learning center, and then you can use them with the class, but you can use them to practice. It's like, um, I've had people come to class in person and they've been, you know, we've, they've trimmed cadaver legs and, and, and do everything like we normally do in classes, but then they want to go ahead and get these, like they took the classes, they feel good. But so the cool part about these is they, they can actually take these, mark them up, take them out with their horse and like, and compare things and then trim trim the, the doppel hoof first and then work on their own horse because you can transfer that. And like, and if you, and all three, like in the starter kit, there's three different hooves. I'm like, so that gives you an idea of different different issues that you might come across. Yep, there's that one is I see I can't remember which one's which. Uh, I think one the one in your right hand I think is one C. See. This is this one is one B. One B. Yep. And then yep. So one and B this is, one is um, one C. One C. So that's another cool thing. So I don't know if you can see. Can you see it if I hold it up to you? I don't know if I'm too close. Your little thing, your background blurs a little bit. I've taken my background off. So okay. So um, so you've got one C. So like, if you notice on one C, this horse has had an event. So these are these are oh, scanned from okay. Real Do me a favor and unshare your screen, and then I they can see it better on because I'll be okay. bigger. Okay. Let me move my screen. 
Okay. That worked? Yep. So yeah, you can see the event line right there. Yeah. So these are scanned off of like real cadaver feet. And so um, when you look at this foot and then you look at the, like the, the details of the rings, you can see that. And then if you flip it over, you can see that the, this, this foot has been distorted and then the frog is messed up. So like these are, these are actually taken off of um, real cadaver feet. So, so let's talk about that a little bit because that, you know, when I opened it up, I, I had questions. One, and yeah, I think you've just answered is that the, the feet that you have in the box are actually feet that real feet that you scanned with a 3D scanner to make a 3D model. Yes. Or and, Jamie. Well, yeah, that's that I'm gonna that is the implied. <laughs> yes. Sorry, when I sorry, say you, yes, it's yes. the collective you. It's like okay. Me. Okay. okay. And so how many different feet do you have? So currently we have these three because um, we're working through like all the processes. So we, we wanted to get something out there and get started. So this is the beginner kit. Okay. So there's three, there's three separately different feet and they yeah. go from ranges from 1A, 1B. So like 1A is pretty much a maintenance trim. That's the one that's when, on the leg for me, right? This is 1A? Yes. Yes. So it's pretty much a maintenance trim, not too difficult. Like it's just getting you familiar with your tools, like starting to get your breath, you know, like, okay. I'm like this, this is what my horse's feet might look like if they just need to be touched up. Then one B is, um, I don't have my one B with I me. I have so my one B right here. So one B has got some distortion to it and I'm like a little more work and a little more frog work to do. And you've got some issues with that. Yeah. And like, and, and, crush what, the heels. The heels are kind yeah. of cutting in. What's really cool about 1B, and so like this blends right into my hoofwear patterns class, because if you look at 1B, there's a hoofwear pattern to that foot. So you can also start to figure out hoofwear patterns and how horses were landing. So like it takes some time, but, um, but it all will blend in. All these hooves will eventually blend in with all the classes that I have, but it also starts to, to stretch your mind a little bit that horses can have wear patterns that they wear a certain way on their feet. And then it starts expressing themselves as so, so one of the things, and this is what we can't do with Zoom, the texture of the foot, there are different textures for each of the different structures. Yes, yes. So that was, that was a big thing for us. I, I'm, I, I'm fascinated by that. And because the frog is squishy, you can see I can squish it, right? And the wall is hard and there's a white line. And then the sole is different. Again, it's like in between squishy and hard. Yes. So, yes. I mean, I don't want you to give away your secrets and I know it's patent pending, which I'm really thrilled about because then it's okay. But when Jamie's making these, he, A, he has a pretty big printer box, yeah. 3D printer box. Yeah. Cause I know a little bit about 3D printing and you, there's a couple of different styles, but basically, you know, something for this size and being able to make enough of them, he's got a pretty big printer box. Yes. Okay. And then does he print one part and then another part out of a different material and then another part out of a different material and then sandwich them together uh no um he does like they have a whole and, and um so jamie's on here with us wendy can oh, you good. add him let's get him on because these are questions i want answered uh <laughs> so let me let me get hang on good i'm glad jamie's there because jamie i'm just really okay why can't i get to my people my per, there we go Jamie, Jamie Thomas, there we go. We're gonna bring you as a panelist since we can't get Tina. Okay, and you should be able to like turn on your video and and talk to us. There he is. Is he here? Yeah, he's like, he just like, I think that he put up just a picture up. He's not uh, like, but he's on there. He's, he's still muted though. Uh, what? Nope, that's, that's Ida. Where is he? Gallery. He's on the far right. So you got it's me, you, and then Tina, and then Jamie. He's on the far right. Okay, I don't see him on my screen. Not yeah, we're He's not seeing there. him. Jamie, say something. He's, Let's find out if we got audio. It says ask to unmute. So I'm gonna ask him to unmute. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, why. He said he just texted me. He's working on getting the mic. Okay. Yeah, because He's getting I the mean, mic. I, I'm that was one of the things that when I unboxed this, I was like because we have ventured toward 3D printing at times and backed off, which we're really glad about in the end, um, but it's not a simple thing and not a simple thing what you're doing here with different materials to get no. the textures right, because that's one of the things that, you know, people can't get from us 
from a video is the textures are really yes. different in the well, materials. And not just even on that frog, but it's like, I don't know if you can see this because of my background, but like if, if you get the layer Put it right there, in front of you so that it's not blurred. Okay, so like here this right here, the digital cushion is there too. The digital that we like, he, I mean, Jamie added the digital cushion with the frog. So like this is squishy too. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm at a distorted foot. No wonder it's not showing up here. This yeah, so it's like feel that feel the part the bottom part of the leg. The bottom part of the leg is squishy. Oh wow, it is. How cool is that? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> the digital cushion. We added this, we added this the part digital here. Cushion. This where it says yes. look like legs. Yes. That's squishy. Yes, not just the like, I want of that. That's I haven't part. taken my foot off yet. So yeah, it's a huge part that of, of teaching people because I want them to understand what a good digital cushion feels like. So wow. each of these each of these hooves. So like one C has got a really not so good digital cushion when you add that on there because it's like yeah. it doesn't have enough. So it's, it's got not a good digital cushion. So we want to um I want to have people understand that um a uh, bad digital cushion feels a lot like a marshmallow, and then uh, a mediocre uh, digital cushion feels about like a um, uh, overripe uh, avocado, and then a um, a good digital cushion should feel like a, a nice orange. So like you're really to um, be able to feel it so that each one of these have the corresponding digital cushions to to what that is. Wow, that's so cool. So when did you first get this idea? Oh, gosh, probably it's probably been at least five or six years ago. I think I had the idea before I met you. And then we were talking, you and I had talked about it. And I said, I just um, like I wish I could come up with something because we were trying to figure out some way to, to be able to teach people that I could ship legs. And then, um, and I knew you did 3D printing or had some experience with it. And you're like, yeah, like, but you could, like you, we would just kind of like hit miss. So I probably have been thinking about this for at least five to seven years. It's like, um, yeah. yeah. This is not an overnight success. This is a many <laughs> years in the making with a ton of hours going into R and D. And that's, uh, I just, I so appreciate that from, yeah. You know, you know, I do know, I do know, like yeah. liquor presses that are missing their pin. <laughs> they can't ever send the right one. It's been three months. I know. I know. I'm still sitting Jimmy's trying to get his mic unmuted. So he said he thinks he has mic. So I'm going to ask him to unmute. Yeah, ask him. I don't know why I can't see him. Uh, so, um, hey, can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Hi. Hi, hey, Jamie. Jamie. I can't see it, but we can hear you. We don't have to see it. It's okay. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so, so Jamie, tell us a bit about. I mean, don't give away all your secrets. Okay, I get that. Sure. But, but tell us about how you're doing this because the the textures are so fascinating, and and how you how you build that. Well, I'm I'm glad you think they are. Uh, like Ida said, we we've been working a long time on trying to get the the right material to. Uh, to, to replicate at least the feel and certainly the look. And so we've, uh, there, it's a combination of certainly 3D printing and we've got a 3D print farm um, uh, at our house where we're cranking out uh, the products here, the legs and the hooves. And then we combine that with some, some other materials. The, there's uh, rubber, uh, polyurethane rubber associated with it. And we've got different materials that then we kind of create a manufacturing process after the 3D printing to put all of that stuff together. And you can see when you look at the hoof, there's some underneath it, uh, there's a bunch of holes and stuff like yeah. that going on there. And all of that is uh, part of how the, um, uh, the, the material is put in and uh, then how you attach it to the leg. So it's, um, uh, it, it's a combination of different manufacturing processes to get it to that uh, end state that you're looking at there. So my husband's an engineer, <laughs> which is why I know a little bit about 3D printing and a sure. lot of other things that I should not know about. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like totally you should know. <laughs> Engineers um, have all the secrets. Yeah, well, and that's this is an engineering feat because you had to figure out uh, not only 3D printing, you know, scanning the hooves, but then figuring out yeah. how you were going to build this together to have those different textures and put them yeah. together and then how you're going to have it hold on to the leg. So all yeah. of that, yeah. it takes a lot of uh, engineering design tri trial and error. Like how many hooves, how many times did it fail before you got? The oh leg? my gosh. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Well, you know, um, in, in, if your husband's an engineer, maybe he'll appreciate that. It's still failing, but, um, <laughs> uh, but in a good way. Uh, the idea is that, you know, we, like I just said, we've been, we've trial and error this thing to death. And, um, you know, it, it seems like the, the way that you put the hoof on the leg and you put a screw in, that is super simple. We did not start out simple at all. We started <laughs> out because when you look at it, you think, wow, there's probably some clever ways you can attach those things. And there are tons of clever ways you can, but we wanted to make it uh, super simple uh, easy to manufacture, uh, and uh, something that would be consistent over time. Because like I just said, the, the hooves that you have now are just the beginning. Um, that is their name, beginner hooves. Uh, the, uh, the idea is there are other hooves that will be attached to that same leg. So we wanted to have a simple way that you could have multiple types of hooves that would attach to the leg very easily. And um, uh, we just, you know, we tried lots of different things and failed horribly at uh, hundreds of different ways of doing it. So, well, uh, and that's, so, you know, when you see something that's as simple and elegant as this, you know that there's been so much thought behind it. Um, you know, it, 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 I think that is the hallmark of something well done is that it appears appears really simple and easy. And that means you've put a ton of work into it. Well, well I appreciate that. Uh, we all do. Uh, Tina, Ida and I all uh, in, in our family, we, we did put a lot of thought into it. And I'm, I'm glad you look at it that way, because that's how we do. Has it taken over yeah. your life? <laughs> Only 95% of it. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> we're, we're trying to keep 5% of life uh, somewhere. Yeah, no, I get it. Now you said you have a, a, a 3D printing farm. How many printers do, do you have running to make enough? You know, like after this webinar, I think there's the sales are gonna increase. So I'm just curious what your production level is right now. All right, I'm gonna count them right now. We have just <laughs> enough to produce exactly what we need. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> a little bit of a trade secret on how many we have because part of that is uh, how can we efficiently create, uh, print out the best product as efficiently as we can? And so we're constantly increasing that number. Um, and so uh, uh, hopefully we're going to kind of create a, you know, behind the scenes video on awesome. um, or, or story, uh, some kind of content on how all of this is made. Uh, we're kind of keeping a, some of it a little bit, you know, close to the vest right now. Sure. Um, uh, while the patent is still pending. And so, uh, um, yeah, it, it's, but it's pretty cool, I think. Oh, is <laughs> I think so everybody I, I, Okay, so this is just a personal question. How many years have you been working on your packet, patent? Because I've been at it for six. <laughs> uh, well, not, not that long. We haven't okay. been working on it that long. And uh, we're sort of right in the middle of it. So, yeah, pandemic has kind of uh, silenced it. If I, is, the way I would say it for me, but yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically now the beginner packet, it's going to have these three hooves and um, I don't know that I have a tool. What kind of tool would I use to, to take this uh, screw out? Quarters. Yeah. <laughs> quarters. Are like, that's the cool part. When Jamie, when Jamie came up with that, you can use quarters, you can use a screwdriver, you can use a hoof pick. Like whatever you have handy, like I like that's like it was so many things as 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 these were progressing along. I mean, it was just like every time like he'd be he'd bring back the next next product. Like I'm like poor Jamie though. I'm like he had. So I've just found something to I, my hoof knife actually to unscrew it. So I'm just going to show people how that works. I'm just going to. This is the first time I've I've taken the hoof off. So you just oh unscrew awesome. Screw that, and then that hoof comes off and there's my base. How cool is that? So then I just take my next hook and I have not done this before. So this is all new. Now you, you send additional screws uh, in the package. And is there a reason that I can't reuse the screw I had? You absolutely can. The reason we do that is um, um, we know it's a, uh, an, an item that can get lost. Um, and so if you lose them, we don't, we, we just didn't want you to be stuck 
without the ability to use your doppel hoof. And so we just, um, you know, we were thinking, well, should we put one or two or three? So we just decided three and you can keep those around. And um, so that's why we, we put multiple ones in there. Okay. Hopefully they'll last as long as the leg does um, and you will only need one, but um, okay. uh, yeah. No, that answers my, but that's how easy it is to just change out from one hoof to the next. And now I'm ready to start working on my, uh, this is B, right? Let's see. Yeah, that looks like Yeah, B. this is B. So I can start working on, on a, a, a more distorted foot. So I, I just, um, I, you just like, literally you just launched them like when? Uh, when was our unboxing originally? Like um, about a month ago? Maybe, do you remember when we did that? Like, uh, um um we no we didn't launch them though like we, we launched them um in in combination with my beginner on my online beginner trim class okay so um if uh if becky's on with the chat she could answer that i don't know if she's on because she, she okay but it's not long so. i mean you literally just launched this thing yeah, yeah. yes right. yes okay and um so the plan is to have a whole range of hooves of varying distortion like a laminitic foot um, you know, and everything so that people can practice doing those different feet. Now, once they trim this foot, that's it, right? Once they trim the foot that they have. Well, not necessarily. Cause okay. so, so, so once they trim the foot, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go back for just a second and share my screen okay. and then, um, I'll be right and back. Jamie's so just like, hang in there. Cause I'm sure I'll have more questions for you. Hang in there, Jamie. I'll just <laughs> <Okay>. share my <laughs> screen. So <laughs> let me go here back to the PowerPoint again. So, uh, so let me just show you this part because um, so they're trimmable. We already established that. Okay. So my, that there, you can trim them. You can cast them so you can practice casting. Oh, wow. So, so once you trim it, it's not just, it's not just over because you can cast them and you can glue shoes on them and take the shoes off. Like you can do all that. Um, the only thing because we did all kinds of movements and um, you just stored it a little bit. Currently. Say that again. What'd you just say? One thing, one thing that you can't do, we've been uh, experimenting. And so nailing a shoe on is not recommended because it's too much, um, too much pounding and vibration for the materials. Um, so we, I don't recommend that. Uh, not to say that you can't do it, but I don't know that it, it's, it's um, compatible. And then, but you can glue shoes on them. You can take them off so you can practice your shoe gluing. So like, like people get nervous and not being able to do their shoe so they can practice their gluing. And then because oh my, it's not going to go out in the mud or anything, you can take it off and you can remove some of the glue and keep practicing like that. So you're not going through a bunch of shoes. So you can do that. And then we even did this. So um, we put it in a formal hoof mold just to see what would happen, you know, so it would practice on like filling in the formal hoof mold with the polymers. And then, so that picture on the right. So um, we were, at, we were at an advanced professionals class in Texas and Tina actually had a horse, a client's horse that had torn a deep flexor tendon and needed stabilization. So uh, none of us nail shoes on. Um, we just use the glue and we use the form of molds and stuff like that. So, but it, the horse needed stabilization. So um, that gave Tina time to practice. Like she actually nailed an opponent shoe onto the form of hoof, uh, pol the, the polymer on that that we use for the form of hoof mold. And then, um, so it gave it more stabilization to be able to practice that before she actually did that on the live horse just because it was something different that we, that we don't normally do. So, so just because you've trimmed your hoof, it doesn't mean it's over. You can practice casting, you can practice gluing, you can do all that. Wow, that's pretty cool. So what size foot is this? Two, size two. Okay. Um, well, that, do you well, have... At least one A is a size two. Okay, do you have plans of making legs and feet in larger size. I'm thinking of my horse, of course. <laughs> you know, I'll, working I'll let Jamie horse. answer that one because I'm like, well, like I'm hounding about it, but it's like, but I'm not the one producing them. So Jamie's got to answer <laughs> that one. <laughs> um, there, there certainly are plans for it, uh, you know, uh, bigger and smaller. Um, so, so yeah, um, you know, the idea is that we, we wanted to get something out there that was conceptual um, at the beginning and then start iterating into more specifics as, uh, uh, as time goes on. Sure. That makes total sense. You know, you've got to, you start somewhere and it starts working for you. And then 
you've you've got the ability to then invest in because I can guarantee anybody watching this that the investment in coming up with the whole thing and the size and everything working is huge. Um, uh, just just the hours, <laughs> never mind anything else. Um, it's a uh, yeah yeah it, it it's it's a lot, uh, but it's it's been incredibly rewarding. You know, me and Tina love working with Ida and just the 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 stuff we've been able to do. Like Ida said, we. <laughs> We've been meeting uh, in different towns all over America in hotel rooms, <laughs> uh, trimming hooves. And uh, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, as weird as that sound, it, it, it's really fun. <laughs> so. Yeah. And somebody just said, you know, eventually mules and donkeys because their feet are quite different. And so being able to have uh, donkey feet and mule feet that, that I mean, that, yeah basically the ba that now that you have the basic concept and once that starts to roll which in my opinion this is going to be a um, a really popular product you know that then the world's your oyster and you can expand into all the other ones um and i totally get getting something on the ground first so that there's actually uh cash flow before you yeah. start expanding out and <laughs> <laughs> right. there's always that yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's uh so so um I know. What, what else? Tell us more about it. Like you've been using this in your teaching now, right? Yes. So, so like what I've done a couple of times um, in the classes, once that we got them launched, so then I have some in the classes and I usually ask a student or, or, or two if they want to try, rather trim on the doppel hoof than the cadaver foot. And, you know, a lot of people would rather do that because um, some have sentimental ideas that they don't want to trim on the cadaver foot and some are a little squeamish. So, it's kind of cool to have an alternative that they could still learn. And then they still are in the class when they're seeing all the cadaver feet and the differences, but they are too squeamish themselves to, to do it. It's been I'm like everything about this. I'm like, I, I, Jamie and Tina and I are having so much fun with all of it because everything about this just adds something for everybody because, you know, if someone comes to class and they're squeamish and there's nothing else to let, allow them to trim, they're gonna go ahead and do it, but it can be a much more enjoyable um, experience for them if they've got a foot in their hand that doesn't doesn't make them nauseous. Well, and I have to say that it does have an odor, but it's not an unpleasant odor that makes me wanna throw <laughs> up like a cadaver leg, sorry. <laughs> I know, I know, I just had a bunch of classes and it was so hot. I mean, it was like, it was um, it was the beginning of the month and it, like it's a hundred feet and um, you know and I keep the cadaver feet frozen until the last minute but by the end of the day they're not smelling great so these, these are the, like they're not smelly it's like the, it gives people a good handle and then again it's something that somebody could practice over and over and over again with like gluing on their shoes or like casting I'm like you can practice on this stuff in, in a, a place that's not hot or cold or whatever and well we should talk about the kind of tools that you can use with it right so you know I grew grabbed my my nippers and I played with doing some nipping and that worked great and then of course you can use your rasp so it's like you get to use I have my rasp you get to use all of your tools yes. right yes. and your knife I won't show you my knife because you're going to have a fit if you see my knife <laughs> <laughs> but it's not you know you can you can use all the tools that you would normally use to trim this just like you would be trimming a hook um and I assume that it's intended to just put it between your your thighs to work on it. Mostly, yeah. But so um, so I've been coming up with some ideas about like different holding patterns for that. But like so you can and, and even in the classes, people are doing this. So you can put it between your, your thighs to hold it or some people lay it on their lap and like and then some people actually have their the hoof jack and then they um, rest the foot on the hoof jack so that they're holding it just like they would do if it was on their own horse's foot, you know, because some people use the cradle and the hoof jack or their hoof stand. And so that you can rest that right in the hoof jack the same kind of way and then uh, practice like that. So however that you trim your own horse that you wouldn't need a, like a full leg for, you can do the same thing. You can put it in the hoof jack and hold it. You can put it in your leg and hold it. You can actually like, like some people trim on a roll around stool. You can sit it, anything that you can do like that, you can do with this. So it, it, and, and that way it, it practices you in the position that you'll be in trimming. So if and you're, that's, you know, that was the first thing Brad said when he saw me with it between my knees, it's like, 
um, a, using the cradle. And he was suggesting maybe even having a strap that you could design mm -hmm. that goes over your cradle to stabilize it since there isn't the rest of the leg, um, which would not be a difficult thing to do, but then you've got it in your cradle and you can work on it yeah. that way. So you're in position. And I think that that's uh, really an important piece because if you're just standing up working on it, you're not gonna get, you're not gonna develop the strength and stability right. of how to work right. on a foot when it's actually on a horse. Yeah, however however that you normally trim, you should be able to to do this the same way. Oh my, and, and again, we need to get something to hold it on at the, in the on the hook jack, but so even some horses don't, don't stand like with their leg just in the cradle, like without something. So it just gives you practice. So some people will put, um, uh, uh, having their like their knee on it and and doing it like that. So oh wow. I know, yeah. So we Ansley's just got a really interesting comment. Yeah. So uh, Ainsley saying having the chance to trim both cadaver hooves and doppel hoof, I can say it felt almost identical to trim rasp cast etc. That's really cool. Yeah, it was like and Ansley did an awesome job. It's, and that was where like when we were meeting all over the U.S. like and trying these things out, it was I'm like and poor Jamie is like. You know, Tina and I work on feet all the time. And so Jamie has to take our word for her stuff. So we're like, dude, I'm like, this feels really awesome. But you know, can we do this? I'm like, you know how many times I'm like like you guys have these the most cool feet and and I bet I love these, but can we do one more thing? And I'm like, you know, every time like he's like, sure, sure. I don't know how it was in their their house or anything, but <laughs> he was always good when I said, like, could we add one more thing? And and he just like okay <laughs> so like he was always sending back and forth the drawing board a lot because um they had to feel when we nipped them they had to feel so like you can nip this hoof like you do a regular hoof and you can keep you know i'm like i tease my students because um when they when they first start they're not they're not um that uh competent with their nippers yet it takes a while to get you know how to work those so so i always tell them that they they pass like the the first stump when they can nip their hoof wall that they're nipping off all in one all in one piece and uh -huh. so it had like it had this the this hoof had to be able to do that and like we trialed and aired that a lot it's um because like if i would nip it and it would break i'm like no this is not so like jamie would go back and mix the materials again and then we try it again i'm like no that's too gooey or you know so it had like th these feet feel like um and the average horse feels like in the the early summer so they're not like they're not brittle like they've been too hot they're not they're not mushy like they've been too wet they just feel like the average horse in a um, well, and I even like like on this one there's a bit of frog that you're going to want to nip off there too yes. you know, or yes. take your knife to it um so so jamie i'm just uh, you know i'm going to ask you a question that you probably haven't thought about yet but um there there is something called equitana which is in germany it's the biggest horse expo in the world and they have an innovation award and they're going to be there i'm going to be there again for my fourth time in 2022 they didn't have the 2021 event um this ought to be there jamie yes do it oh wow uh yeah <laughs> so um yes <laughs> um so um uh, we'll we'll uh, uh, maybe we'll I can reach out and get some information about it. yeah okay yeah, yeah. fantastic um because uh, you know this is one of the most innovative uh products and um you know in terms of training people and there's there um there's a lot of the farrier schools that are there the big farrier schools like one guy that i talked to he had like 11 schools in germany and five in switzerland or something like that so um i the yeah but that's what that's where this needs to be having been to equitana um you're not german so i can't promise you'll win <laughs> you're american <laughs> you're you're to switch, don't you <laughs> well i i've been you know, up for I did, you I did... award three times and never won you know so. oh i studied german in college but i the only thing i can remember is is schwarzburton uh, which I think means dark bread. And I don't know why I can remember that. <laughs> but maybe that'll maybe that'll help. I don't know. I know, Jamie, but you're a guy. I think that'll, that'll help for a start. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and it's already doppel hoof. So it's like, yeah, it's actually, yeah. there you go. Doppel hoof. Like, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, we were planning ahead for all of this. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll tell and of course, are you going to be at Hoof Summit? And we had uh, what was that? absolute silence uh, well we hadn't thought about it yet i'm like we hadn't talked like 
usually we brain we're going to brainstorm together um we're actually doing classes um at uh, wildwood farms in georgetown tennessee with um with melanie uh smith taylor uh next oh, week oh wow we're, okay yeah we're all meeting Tell there her i said hi i will you're like well you should pop over yeah, uh, like, it's, just, it's just like a couple of miles for you, you know. Yeah, it's just a couple of miles. No, I've been to her place and it's a lot more than a couple of miles because it's Memphis. It's the other side of Tennessee. Yes, I thought yes, it was like, my side. I was wrong. She's <laughs> she's she's a wonderful, wonderful person. And I know she has a sure foot pad. So when you get there, see if she's using it. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure she is because I'm like, we were there in March and one of my graduates trimmed some of her horses. I'm like, she's uh, she's a lovely person. And so Jamie and Tina and us are meeting there um, next week, some teaching classes. And so um, we'll get the surefoot pad out and um, we'll, we'll uh, brainstorm about the next places that we're going. Well, I just think that this is something that needs to get out there. And the best way to get it out there is to get to some of these larger shows where people can see it, um, you know, I'll be at Hoof Summit again. Um, I'm actually going to have a double booth this year uh, in Cincinnati in 2022. Um, so if you if you decide not to have your own booth, you can only uh, we can talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very cool. Because I've already got it booked. <laughs> so what the heck? Um, <laughs> All right, that's awesome. Yeah. So, Wendy, you're going to be in Massachusetts, um, isn't it, Maryland or Massachusetts for the uh, Equine Fair this year? It's up in Massachusetts. It's in November. So I have a double booth at. Um, Retired Racehorse Project in Lexington, no, October 12th through, what's the weekend, 6th, 15th. And then I'll be at um, Equine Affair. I'll be presenting as well as have a double booth there. And that's November, I think it's like 12th. And then I'll be at AAEP with a double booth in Nashville, Tennessee. And what, when is that? That is the first weekend in December. And then I'll be at Hoof Summit. So, uh, you know. Where's the AAE? Is it someplace warm? Nashville. Okay. Well, that's not... like, um, Florida. But, you Florida. know, it may be something that we can talk about um, because I'm already, I've already got my booths booked and, and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, sometimes it's easier to partner up than try and go on your own. That would be awesome. <laughs> you know, like I knew, like, I knew we'd have so much fun, like, just like we, like, cause the cool part is, is that like, you knew this when it was like, the the puddle washing part you know it's like we're like wow well, gotta do this it's like like well, yeah and then because i remember talking to you it's been i think three years ago yeah i don't know years ago we talked quite a bit and um you're like you got to get on this and stuff and it's like you know so it all came together but so so you you knew it before it was actually formed yeah. <laughs> well if everybody watching thinks it's like Ida and i just having a chat we are yeah. we never get into business so just like, sitting around the campfire yeah yeah <laughs> Like, you know, it just makes me miss you though. Cause it's like, it, like, we just need, we don't, I haven't seen you forever. I know. Besides I know. now. I'm, I'm hoping to be able to get down to Texas uh, for the thing you have in November. Yeah, sure. And we'll see. You know. Yeah. Like the Wilsies are coming. Yes, I know. I know. Yeah. So I, you know, anyway, and then I can meet Jamie and um, I've met Tina. That would be fabulous. Be like, great. please come. Okay. So um, anybody got any questions for these guys? Uh, what's the CCRC? Is that the thing? Uh, in Kiritik, um County, uh, Maria, tell us, but it's like, it's where we had the classes last year and we're going to be there in April. Uh, next oh, year. you mean with, to, with Marie? Yes. What's yes, the yes. dates? I don't have them yet. I'm trying to work on them. I know, I'm sorry. Because <laughs> April is when, when um, Equitana is. So that's why I need to, I need to know the dates. So I've got, um, a handful of days that Tina can't come. So I'm going to go around that. And then, then when you, when we get done with this, text me the dates that you could come so that I can see if that, that I can. Well, work. I'll tell you the dates where I'm going to be in Germany because what happens if, if all goes well, I go over and then I stay over for a little while. So, so um, Equiton is the seventh through 13th. Anyway, we'll talk. We'll yeah, talk. Um, so because I, I want to be at that. And you know, it's hard to be in two places. I haven't figured out that yet. I know. Right. That's my problem too. I don't, like I'm like like go here go there and it's like so then like I I I kind of freak out sometimes. Yep. So Jamie, um, what what's the one thing you want my audience to know about Doppelhoof? Oh, uh, great question. Um, <laughs> well, certainly that it's available at Doppelhoof.com, but uh, you know it's it's a product that um, uh, I, I you know Tina and I and I have have thought about this for a long time and. It's something that's evolving, certainly. So 
today we feel like it's a really great product and it's going to evolve and get better over time. And that's, that's why we've chosen the manufacturing process that we have so that we can, we can constantly iterate and make it better. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, we, we love feedback and, um, uh, we, we want people to try it and, and let us know what they think. Um, it, we think it's a great product. We think it's going to help a lot of people. Um, and that's and, the point, uh, Jamie. I mean, the yeah. bottom line is the whole, the whole love behind this product is to help people be able to help their horse. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, it is a product of love. I mean, we, we put, uh, you know, we, we've all put just so much into it because I, I tell you, like, I have a moderate love for horses, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Tina, my wife and my family, uh, my gosh, like the, the, the horse community, they love their horses. And so, <laughs> uh, and so that's, that has gone into this, um, you know, uh, some, somebody who's just manufacturing a product would never do this. It's, it's just, it's too much trouble. You know, right. uh, you have to have a love for the, for the community, for the, uh, uh, for the horses. And so that, you, you know, uh, Tina has enough love for, I think the whole world, uh, yeah. when it comes to horses. And so, uh, uh, I, I think that that has come out in the product. Yeah, no, for sure. And like I said, right down to the last detail, the little string that ties it all together. Um, I, I had so much fun unboxing it. Um, uh, because oh, I did great. the rolls inside, you know, <laughs> I was just like, let's, right. Brad, let's do this. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. That, that actually, that was my daughter's idea. So, uh, oh, yeah. well, tell her it was great because, you know, so much about a product <laughs> is that when you, when you first get it and that opening up and that's nice surprise, but yeah. this, you know, the, the, again, the thing is it's a labor of love and it's here to help horse people help their horses. And there's so many times when you can't get someone out to trim your horse, I can tell you the number of times that if people start to learn how to trim their horse themselves by using doppel hoof so that they, they feel safe working on their yeah. horse. And that is such an important thing because, you know, I've trimmed my own horses for years, but I wound up in it because of the problems I had with someone else trimming my horse. Um, it was mm -hmm. never my intention. And I, I'm not sure I want to keep doing it, but I've got to find somebody I trust. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, so all these, all the hooves that, that, that are in process and like they go hand in hand as the releases of the online classes that I'm doing too. So the, the beginner, the beginner trim class, like we released the beginner hooves, the um, intermediate class is coming up next. And so the intermediate hooves will be released. Like we're trying Where to they, like, can they find out more about your online classes? Uh, that's on the Thinkific, um, Mackinac Dells Learning Center on Thinkific. So if they go to Mackinac Dells, is there a link? Um, yeah, let me see. I got it on here. Um, make, let me go back one second to the share screen yep. thing. Just so and then, know. I'll, then I'll put it there. Because so a lot of that, because all the stuff that we like we've been doing, we've been actually doing, trying to do it in conjunction, like we've been kind of like going hand in hand with that so that, uh, so can you see that? You know, I'm thinking on the bigger picture that every farrier school should have something like this, even if they can't nail to it so they can learn the trim. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of farrier schools that, you know, like in Europe, I, there's a lot. So um, yeah. there it is, Mackinac Dells to learning dot Thinkific. So I'm yeah. in Thinkific too. Cool. Yeah, it's like so, because a lot of this stuff. So when we started all this, and like this is the discussion we had with Jamie and and Tina is we started all of this so that I would have something to um to use hands on with my classes, but then um like within a short amount of time there was lots of interest in it. So like we like I I I, I of course I prefer people to use them in conjunction with my classes because I'm like it makes sense, but I'm like it's a cool product besides that. So you know, it has to be available everywhere. Yes. And that's what we're excited about. Jamie, but, um, I hope you're gearing up there. Get those 3D printers coming. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're, we are ready and we can scale to what uh, any number. Well, awesome. not any number, but sure. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you both for joining me. I'm sorry that Tina couldn't be here to join us, but I know she's listening. So she's probably- She's happy. still working. <laughs> <laughs> yes okay um 
And I just, you know, like I don't typically do a webinar that is specifically on a product, but I really feel that this is such a great thing for, uh, you know, like I started all these webinars trying to figure out how Surefoot works. And of course that has to do with the foot. And um, of course I met Ida and we keep coming back to this foot, you know, no foot, no horse. That's what the saying is. And the more we can do to learn about the hoof, improve our care of that hoof, and the overall care and balance of the horse, the better off the horse and the rider is going to be. So thank you all so much for putting uh, so much love and labor into this product. Thank you for like letting us do that. And like, and well, part of it is like, I, I wanted, we, we, you and I don't get to visit that much. Like but we're always busy. And, um, and you, you were a huge inspiration for all of this. So it's like, it's not like I'm, it was like, I got to share this with you too, because like, we haven't, like, we haven't got to chat. Like when we, when we were talking about this in the beginning, like you were on the way to the airport, we were taking the airport, right? Like, yeah, I remember. We should do this and, and we should do that. I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And then, so then when it finally happens, I'm like, I'm like, sorry, we had to do it on a webinar, but it's like, <laughs> but, like but Wendy, we got, you got to see this now. I'm like, we just can't, we just like, like, you know, I can believe this. And so, yeah. Really awesome. All right. Thanks everybody for listening and thank you for joining me and have a great night. And uh, Ida, I'm looking forward to seeing you and uh, Tina and, and uh, Jamie, you too. So one of these yeah, days. Thank you together, very much. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. Th thank you so much. All right. Have a great night. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.